These are some Hearst Starch Mold, and this is a hand carved one by my nephew Ian. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break these up so they're small enough and I can put debris on here. And on a smooth piece like this, I just wanna make sure it's all chipped on the sides to where it looks like it's been destroyed. This is Merlin's Magic, so it's a little bit tougher to, to deal with, but that really doesn't matter. Um, I just want pieces that uh, I can put on here, like that one right there I'll save because it's round and I'll put that like that somewhere just in case. But most of all, I just wanna make sure it's broken. And so I can just put various rubble pieces on there. If they're broken like this, I just wanna keep them close together. That way I possibly can just separate them a little bit and show that they were once together. I forgot how much of a pain Merlin Magic is to use because it's so hard. But anyway, I put some pieces on here and I made it try to look like it's jumping something. And just kind of, that's why I put the larger pieces in front of it. That way it kind of gives more of the illusion why it's or more of a reason why it's leering up. Also use this glue to uh, glue all these pieces on. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use the same glue and pour it around in between all the cracks and then put sifted sand in there. And just use a really fine tool to manipulate it and move it around, get it all over. And I need to put more in. Didn't quite put enough. Now that it's spread all over, I'm just gonna put my sifted sand. This is just playground sand. Oh, I guess that didn't sift very well. There's a big rock in there. And just kick it in. Before it's totally set up, I just go around and try to, if there's any glue to the side, I just try to remove them before it totally sets up. I'm gonna use mudstone to do the base color of it. And I'm gonna be careful not to catch my brush on it so I don't flip paint up on the, on the finished model. The only reason I didn't do all this beforehand is because I have so many models and so many figs right now that I just don't wanna build bases every time I have to do a fig. I'd rather just figure out what I wanna do after, make it work, and then it is what it is. I'm gonna use Army Painter uh, Green Tone. I did put, add a little bit of water to it just to dilute it a little bit. And I don't care, my, my mudstone isn't quite dry yet, which is fine with me. And I don't really wanna be especially careful that I don't flick my brush and get paint upon my model. Now this I do wanna have dry before I apply the next one. Sometimes I'll mix it so it's not that big of a deal. But this one I wanna have dry completely before I start doing the next layer. This is red tone, I'm just gonna apply it on the base. I wanna apply it mainly on the sandy area down here. And just kinda of do it liberally, just to darken it up. This is light tone. And this I'm just gonna put on the stonework. I'm not gonna put in the, well, I'm putting this all over. It's almost like a sepia. I think I'm liking this light tone stuff. This is raw sienna. and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna dry brush ever so lightly on the dirt itself. Not a whole lot, just kinda of give it a little bit of a touch of brown on the dirt or I don't want to hit the stones, the rubble, but I don't want to do it overwhelmingly. Just to kind of take that light green hue out of it from uh, that kind of matches the stonework just to make it sure, just to kind of give a, a more dramatic look between the two so they don't quite match up a ton, but just a little bit. This is olive yellow and I just want to dry brush the stonework that I put down, but I don't want to go heavy on it. Just want to give it a more uh, another hint of green. I can even talk this morning. Holy crap! I do want to hit this gap right here because I do want to make it so the red doesn't look like it's bleeding out of the gap. So I want to hit that a little bit more, and then just dry brush all of this. This material, I don't know what it's called, but I got it from someone who did some bouquets or uh, corsages. 
and I put a couple pieces of the, this on there. And now what I want to do is I want to put some wasteland tufts on there from Army Builder, and I want to put some, uh, some winter tufts on there. This is a wasteland tuft. I'm gonna put a tuft right by this plant right here just to kind of give the base a little bit more strength. And I know plants like this aren't really that practical, but because this figure has a tail, I can just pick it up by that if I wanna move it around. And if it breaks off, it breaks off. It is what it is. This is a winter tuft. They're really close together in color, but just off enough that it gives some variety. 